All right, YouTube, David Harry here. So I woke up yesterday and I was thinking, what would encode an MP4 using H.265 HEVC at 4K 60 frames per second, the fastest, within LumaFusion version 3? Would that be the iPad Pro 2020 or the iPad Pro 2021 M1? So I decided to do that test yesterday, which is what this video is all about. Now, this video is a speed test, though. Okay, so I am only concerned about how fast these things take from either of these iPad Pros. This has got nothing to do with picture quality or file size. Just to be clear, it is a speed test. Right, this video is also quite involved because I yammer on about all kinds of stuff to do with the setup and parameters and things like that. Now, if that boring stuff isn't up your street and you just want to know which one's the fastest, then by all means, go to the very end of the video to the end summary. However, for those people who are into the geeky, boring stuff, this video also has chapter markers so you can jump to various sections of the test and, and stuff like that. Also as well, if you take anything away from this video that is positive and, in, and enriches your life any further than what it already is, then please consider giving the video a thumbs up, subscribing to my channel, clicking on the bell notification icon, and share the video. And if you don't have anybody in your life to share the video with, then share it with your cat or your dog. I'll appreciate it one way or the other. Anyways, there will also be Amazon links in the descriptions below for some of the stuff used in this video, as there always are. Anyways, on with the video, and I'll come back at the end for a summary. Okay, so the first iPad Pro that I am going to test is going to be the 2020. Now the test for the 2020 will be a bit longer than the test for the M1. And the reason is, is because for this part of the test, I'm going to explain a bunch of stuff like the project settings and the source media and things like that. This is all stuff that has to be explained so like people can properly understand exactly what's going on here. So what I'm gonna do is first off is to show you that this indeed is the iPad Pro 2020. So let me just go to settings here. Now this is all gonna be blurred out except for one thing here, which is model name, iPad Pro 11 inch second generation. So basically the 2020. Let me just go back to LumaFusion. Okay, so the first thing I'm going to do here is to show you the project settings and also what version of LumaFusion that I'm using. So let me go to settings down here. As far as the project is concerned, it is 60 frames per second. I'm also in 16.9 and I'm in Rec 709 10-bit. Now I'm gonna try my best not to slow down and get stuck on certain things because I get freaked out because I'm getting blown away that, you know, well, basically blown away because LumaFusion is just doing insane stuff here, right? And that's insane stuff on the iPad Pros, but also on the MacBook Air M1. There will be a bunch of other videos coming up to do with LumaFusion on the iPads and on the Mac as well. Um, but right now I can tell you, something like this doing 10-bit processing is absolutely off the hook. It's insane, okay? So let me get past that bit of gushing. Okay, and as we can see up here, version three, so that's version 3.0.2.148 or 1458, I can't count. Now the thing is, that is exactly up to date as of when I've done this video. Okay, now the next thing to show you is the media itself. So what I'm gonna do is just show you here that LumaFusion is going to tell us that it's 3840 by 2160. So as we could see there with the settings, LumaFusion doesn't actually set up initially with a resolution for the project. That will be determined when I add this particular clip to the timeline. But just ahead of me doing that, watch this clip play here. Yeah, all done. In fact, let me just go full screen, hold on. Okay, the reason why I just want to play that clip a little bit is because once again, I am freaked out. That is 4K60. Now, the thing is, some people might be sitting there going, yeah, all right, Dave, it's 4K60 and, well, here's the thing, right? 4K60, I think people just underestimate how difficult 4K60 is with any codec or any particular type of setup within the codec, how difficult these things are to actually not just play, but to edit. 
Now, what makes this even more of a big deal as far as I'm concerned is what I will show you now. I'm just gonna put the clip to the timeline. Now, unfortunately, LumaFusion won't tell us anything here beyond the resolution of the source file, but if we have a look at the name here, I'll just explain what this clip is or the attributes to this clip. So it's H.264. Now, the reason why I'm using H.264 is because on the export, we're gonna go H.265. Now, right now, I don't know if LumaFusion does any kind of smart render or smart exporting. And just to get around that in case it does, I'm using a codec that it won't be smart rendering because it's gonna be H.265 on the output. So H.264, high profile, 10-bit, but with a chroma subsampling of 422 at 200 megabits per second, and it is constant bitrate. Now, let me just explain right now that the main attribute here being, well, H.264 high profile 10-bit 422, that is a very, very difficult type of codec to not just play, but to edit. I have pro software on PC and stuff that can't even like play this stuff in the timeline. So that's why I'm kind of explaining these things because this is mind blowing. Anybody out there who understands the profile here and the Chroma subsampling and, and it, with it being H.264 will attest to how difficult these files are to actually handle. Anyways, just quickly, here it is in the timeline. There it is a bit bigger in full screen. Well, it's actually not total full screen right now, but it is a bigger picture. And as we can see, <laughs> I can't see any frames dropping there. That just looks absolutely insane. So let me come back down here, okay? Right, I, I must apologize right now. There are some things I'm kind of going a bit sideways with here. It's just what I do sometimes, especially when I'm being freaked out, and this is freaking me out. Now, like I said before, there are gonna be a lot of other things that I'm gonna do with LumaFusion, with the iPad Pros, and also my Mac and stuff like that. So if you're into this stuff, defo keep an eye on the channel. Anyways, Dave, get on with it, you're boring us. So what I'm gonna do here is now go to the export, okay? So let me just go to the export tab here. I'm going to export movie. And then I'm going to do render movies folder, okay? Or rendered movies folder. It's basically a folder that's now been set up for the exports to go to. Again, things like that. If people are interested and you know want to ask certain questions in comments, I'll try and deal with these types of things in like future videos and stuff. Anyways, importantly, let's get into this now. So the resolution of the export is 3840 by 2160 4K, basically UHD. And then frame rate is 60. So both the resolution and frame rate here are matching the actual source media and the project, obviously. I'm going with the video quality of Ultra. Now that's basically just gonna give us a bitrate bump when it's on Ultra. So that's 150 megabits per second. Audio quality, that's 48 kilohertz. That's actually matching everything to do with the source and everything as well. Now, down here we've got like, you know, 360 VR, normal video. We don't worry about that because it's got nothing to do with what we're doing. We're just like, say, normal video. It's MP4 and I'm doing the video and the audio. And also I'm using H.265. Now, like I'd said earlier on, I'm not entirely sure if uh, LumaFusion does anything like smart rendering, which is the reason why I've chosen H.264 as the source file. So we know that when this export occurs, we are definitely re-encoding the video footage that's in the timeline. Also as well, it's worth noting here as well, this is gonna export as a 10-bit file as well. Once again, really seriously cool stuff. Anyway, what it is right now, before I go into like, you know, the actual export proper, I can't show you the time. And so what I'm gonna do now, I'm gonna cut away uh, to this same setup as it is right now, but with a camera and a clock next to it so we can see the time. Okay, so I know this all looks a bit mad, but it's the only way that I can get a timer on screen at the same time as the iPad that's actually doing the encoding. So iPad Pro 2020 doing the encoding and actually the M1 is gonna be timing it. So what I'm gonna do is I will just go to the export button up here. Now what's gonna happen when I hit this little button down here, 
that's going to start the export and hopefully I'll hit that at the same time as I hit the start on the clock over there. Now once I've done that I will then just speed up until we get to the end and I'll come in just before the end of the encode finishes so we can get the final time of it. So let me have a crack at this, hold on. Okay, I'm going to come in here now. Let's see if I can stop this when it stops. Hold on. Stop. Okay. Right, so one minute and 13 seconds. Now, I've done a little bit at the end there. That was just writing the file back to the disk again. But the encode happened in one minute and 13 seconds. I won't get into this right now. I will do a summary after I've done both of them. So now to the iPad Pro M1 encoding test. <laughs> Okay, so this is now the iPad Pro 2021 M1. I was flagging just towards the end of that last video, so I've had a bit of a break, I've had something to eat, I'm all charged up, raring to go. Let's see if I can do this, take a bit quicker than the last one. All right, so the first thing I'm gonna do here is let's just show you that this is the iPad Pro M1 2021. I'll just call it the M1 from now on. As you can see here, model name, iPad Pro 11 inch third generation, basically 2021 M1. Okay, back to LumaFusion. So the first thing I'm going to do here is go to the setup. As we can see, 60 frames per second, 16.9, and also Rec 709 10-bit all matches the previous go. And then up here as well, we are on version three, as we can see, or more precisely, 3.0.2.1458, exactly the same as the previous one. And then what we'll do, we'll have a quick look up here. As we can see once again, this particular media is saying 3840 by 2160. But more importantly, if we come down here into the timeline, we can see by its name, it's the exact same file. So same file, same attributes, H.264, high profile, 10 bit, 422 chroma subsampling, 200 megabits per second, and it's CBR. What it is, that's actually, let me just expand it out. There we go, CBR. <laughs> okay, so that is everything sorted to do with us knowing that this is the exact same setup, but this time it is done on the M1. So what I'm gonna do is come down here to the export option. I will go to movie. And then I will also go to rendered movies folder once again. And as we can see here, the exact same setup for the export. So it is 3840 by 2160 4K UHD, 60 frames per second, ultra 150 megabits per second for the bit rate. Also 48 kilohertz for the audio sampling rate. And then normal down here, MP4, video and audio is what we're encoding. And we are encoding to HEVC H.265. Okie doke. So what I'm going to do now is flip over once again to show this where I can have a clock next to it so we can time the encode. Okay, so to another dodgy angle, which is probably underexposed as well, but at this point, who cares? <laughs> okay, so once again, I'm just gonna tap up here to get it ready to export. I hit that button, it starts exporting, but I'm gonna hit the start button, hopefully at roughly the same time. So let me be quiet, get into this, and I will speed up as it does the encode. Go! Okay, so I'm gonna come back in here and let's just see if I can hit stop when it stops. Hold on. Stop. Okay. <laughs> right, so that is a little over one minute and 11 seconds. So what I'm gonna do now is cut away and do a summary. So to the end summary then, and for anybody who jumped straight to the end, here we have it. The iPad Pro 2020 did this encode in thereabouts of one minute and 11 seconds, and the iPad Pro 2021 M1 did the exact same thing in thereabouts one minute and 13 seconds. Now I'm saying thereabouts because there is a human element in this that has to push buttons and stuff like that. So that's gonna alter things by maybe a second or so. And also as well, there are electronic variations that will happen here. You could reproduce these exact same things like a ton of times and get slightly, slightly different results every time as far as the timings are concerned. So what I'm saying here is this, they are identical 
identical for this particular thing that I've just done. Now, there are going to be people out there who are going to go, but hold on, the M1's more powerful than the 2020. Well, I don't think it is, okay? Here's the thing. Both of these iPad Pros are powerful devices, and LumaFusion 3 is already the latest version. And, you know, the folks who make LumaFusion will have known about M1 for some time, and during their updating of the software, they'll have taken that into account. I'm going to go out on a limb here and say something that maybe some people are not going to like. These two iPads are just not that different from one another. And yeah, sure, LumaFusion could have extra things added to it, and hopefully we will see some of that in the future. But that is not optimization. That's literally the people at LumaFusion adding extra things, as they have done in version three, obviously. So yeah, bottom line is, if you're on a 2020, don't be getting stressed out if you're using LumaFusion 3 thinking you have to go to M1. Now, if people know differently than this in the comments below to do with other elements of LumaFusion 3, then please add them into the comments. LumaFusion may well do certain things on version 3 with the M1, such as maybe the grading side of stuff, maybe titling or other things. Maybe it does that a bit faster or a bit quicker. I don't know. Now, the thing is, I will be testing a whole bunch of stuff out to see if I can find the answers to those questions as well. And the reason why, and I was saying it during the video, I've been completely blown away by LumaFusion version 3. I've never used LumaFusion before 3, so I wouldn't know what it was like in the past. But what I've seen so far with this software, it is ridiculous ridiculous it is a standout app for both of these ipads it's amazing and i will be doing more with it in the future and also doing stuff with LumaFusion 3 and also my mac mini m1 i'm looking over there because it is there you just can't see it anyways i think that'll do it for this video it is quite lengthy because i had to do a lot of explaining and stuff like that and i will reiterate the point once again by the end of this week i hope to get to a million subscribers so i would greatly appreciate if you subscribe to my channel also give the video a thumbs up and share the video amongst your cat your dog your, you know your nan whoever and as ever there will be links in the description below to some of the stuff that i've used during the making of this video i'm david harry thank you very much for watching this video take care and goodbye now